Commander Lowe's in the building today, right? He has the review with the Joint Chiefs, and, right. and I was wondering if, um, if you're still not going to help him. It's not that I'm not going to help him, Andy. I can't help him. It's an operational military matter. The high-profile nature of these events means that we have unanimously decided that we have no option but to order your immediate discharge from the Navy. Right, into the lion's den, boys. Where the hell is the backup? We're in the White House, for Christ's sakes. How could they be taking out so many of our guys? Take it easy, Al. We must have had inside help. This is Jessica Cole, and you're watching Channel 9 Action News. The White House has confirmed today that Commander Christopher Lowe will be in attendance there for the outcome of the inquiry into the St. Patrick's Day siege, where the president's daughter, Alice Reynolds, was held captive. Also, earlier this morning, a commuter metro train derailed between Rockville and Twinbrook stations in Washington, D.C. In other news, Vice President Gavin Lawson is to give his long-awaited speech on immigration today in Congress. Chris? Bibby? Have you not listened to any of my messages? Hello, Commander. My name is Sarah Merrick. I'm the PH, the director of the NSA. I've been asked to liaise with you for your planned visit to the White House. Oh, my God. Please attend in your full dress uniform, and upon arrival, you will need to deposit your sidearm at the gatehouse. If you wish to have any clearance for any authorized guests or have any further questions, please call me at 555-1120. Thank you, and have a nice day, sir. We have a situation. You have to come with us right now. We have to get into the bunker, sir. Thank you. Affirmative. Um, as we speak, the First Lady is being escorted from the bunker right here in the White House. What about Gavin? Um, the Vice President secured the uh, bunker at Observatory Circle, sir.
that's it. Thank you, everybody. Go remind yourself what fresh air smells like. I will be in my office. Andy, will you please take us down to CogCon 4? We're at CogCon 4. CogCon 4. Thank you, Mr. President. Let's see if we can get things back on schedule, Mr. Vice President. All right. What's up next? I postpone your meeting with the Minority Leader of the House, which means that we can get you to Congress just a few minutes late. I have your personally written speech right here. I am a hell of a writer. Let's go. Any news on Bob Kirsten? The coroner's report is preliminary, but it looks like an open and shut case of suicide. I just can't believe it. I figured he was too ambitious to kill himself. Thought he still had far too many people in life to walk over before checking out. Forensics all tied him in with shooting himself in the head. Just can't believe he shot his wife, too. The times of death indicate that he shot her just a few hours before turning the gun on himself. Well, you know what they say. Guns don't kill people. Psychopaths do. Mm. We can chalk up another one for the NRA. The Reynolds administration is committed to making meaningful and lasting reform to immigration law. It would be foolish for us as a nation to continue to pretend that there aren't millions of undocumented immigrants in the United States. There are. They're here. And we need to provide those people with a, a legal way to earn citizenship. As long as they pass national security and criminal checks and learn to speak English. It's not only the humane and moral thing to do, but it makes economic sense. These people should be paying income taxes like you and I. Now, the flip side is that we're going to need to invest much more to further strengthen our border protection agencies and assure our national security. And President Reynolds, is unshakable in his belief that his administration must establish stability and security both at home and internationally if the United States is going to continue to deal with the ever-increasing threat of terrorism. We have a situation, Mr. Vice President. We need to leave immediately. This is not a drill. Okay, just, just let me No, sir. We need to leave. Sir. Let me finish. Which is why we will continue to work closely with our allies to combat terror both domestically and internationally. We will invest in new ways to secure our borders against those who seek to harm us and disrupt our way of life. And we will continue to pursue those who have committed harmful acts against us, the United States. God bless you all, and God bless America. What the hell's going on? I have no information at this time. Situation's not yet clear, sir. Please, just come with us. You know the routine. Let's go. No, we're on our way now. Yes, you have... There's no answer at the office, sir. The Eisenhower must still be evacuated. Okay, come on, guys. At least give me a clue here. Mr. Vice President, there's been an explosion at the White House. An explosion? Yes, sir. Oh, my God. The President's all right, isn't he? Uh, I, I don't have that information, sir. The First Lady? I don't know, sir. Are we going to Observatory Circle? No, sir. Headed for Andrews. The helicopter is going to take you to Camp David, and all your team is already there. What about my family? Can we go any faster, please? They'll be driven to meet you there, sir. All right, let's get the television on. Eyewitnesses report hearing distant gunfire and unidentified people fleeing the building just before the east wing roof was torn off by a violent explosion. This is footage we have received captured by tourists on their cell phone. The safety of the president is as yet unknown. Prior to this, the Eisenhower Executive Office building was evacuated due to a fire. It is unclear yet whether these two events are connected. Okay. 
Officer, you need to see this. My, my. This machine records all the video feeds, and I bet we can make a little video of that. Yes, we can. Well, then let's make a little quick time movie and email it to every news channel in the country, shall we? <laughs> Is everything else set? All set, sir. I do hope you're not going to be a problem, Christopher. Hmm. Let's see how CNN like this, though. This is Highway 1, coming in for landing at Camp David with Vice President Lawson on board. Orders are for him to be escorted to the bunker immediately. Over. Copy that. Vice President is on site. Are we down now, sir? Alice is. Mr. Vice President, the First Lady is currently unaccounted for. And my family? They're en route. They'll be here within the hour. There's no need for orientation, sir. This bunker is identical to that at Observatory Circle. Well, deja vu. Looks like it's for real this time, everybody. Can we reach the White House Situation Room, please? I'll try, sir. I'm sorry, sir. White House network is down. OK, uh, try the Pentagon. Hi, sorry to be abrupt, but who are you? I'm Harshal King, sir. I'm the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Public Affairs. The Assistant? Where are your bosses? We're not sure at this time, sir. The Secretary of Defense and the Joint Chiefs of Staff were at the White House for a meeting. I'm currently unaccounted for, sir. All right, what about the Deputy Secretary? Deputy Secretary is here in the Pentagon, sir. General McCammon and the NSA advisor left before the attack and are in transit to join you at Camp David. Sir? Has a meeting of the National Security Council been convened since you were sworn in? No, not yet. Well, sir, I don't know if this will help, but you might want to dial in Northern Command, Special Operations Command, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, as well as the Directors of the Secret Service, the FBI, and the CIA. Right. Thank you, Mr. King. Very helpful information indeed. Anybody get all that? Yes, sir. All right, well, you heard the man. I have the State and Homeland Security, FBI and the CIA online, sir. Thank you. We have Northcom and Southcom. ODNI is online, sir. Okay. Guys, just hold the line. We're just dialing everyone in, all right? We now have the director of the Secret Service online, sir. That's everyone. Okay, thank you. Let's start with the Secret Service. Mr. Director, do you know exactly what's happening in the White House right now? Not exactly, sir. They cut our communication lines very quickly, so it's all very sketchy. The president, however, is in the Oval Office with 13 of my agents surrounding him. Okay, and what, what about the, the rest of the agents in the White House? Without comms, I can't be certain, Mr. Vice President. But between the explosion and the gunfire, it is possible they are the last men standing. Are you, are you saying they're all gone? It's possible, sir. Dear God. 
Sir, we have a news bulletin from Channel 9. They're claiming they know who's behind the attacks. On screen, please. We can confirm that Commander Christopher Lowe looks to be the man responsible for today's shocking White House attack. Evan Clark with more information. The events unfolding at the White House are nothing short of unbelievable. We received the surveillance footage just moments ago of Commander Lowe attacking and killing one of the President's Secret Service agents. Lowe was suspended today following his actions during the St. Patrick's Day siege, for which, according to our sources, he was court-martialed and discharged from the military on charges of reckless behavior and disobeying orders. There are no indications of his aims and motives at this point, but it is clear that the White House is now in full lockdown mode. <laughs> outside line in here. Give it to me. Who do you want to call? Pentagon, I guess. Actual military command center's there, so. He's all over the TV, shooting my agent. We don't know if that footage is real. Do you know who that agent is? Not personally, sir. Can you be certain that that footage came from within inside the White House? Not without analyzing it, no, sir. Then surely the first step would be to do the analysis and to make that identification. I'm not going to make any assumptions or take any action that could jeopardize the president's life based on footage that could have been cooked up by a teenager with an iPad. You know, guys, I'm hearing a lot of assumption and guesswork here. Don't we owe it to the president to not just burst in there based on gut feelings? Mr. President, this is getting closer. My God, it sounds like they're just outside the door. It's ridiculous. We're in the White House, for Christ's sakes. How could they be taking out so many of our guys? Take it easy, Al. They must have had inside help. They're right outside the door. Yes, we're in the boiler room of the White House. Can I speak to whoever's in charge there, please? This is Edward Manzer. Who's that? I'm a civilian. I'm in the boiler room of the White House. I'm the NSA's PA with me, Sarah Merrick. Now, it's not too good here, sir. There are a lot of fatalities. There are dead Secret Service agents everywhere. And since the explosion on the other side of the building, there's been a lot of gunfire. And uh, I would highly suggest getting special forces down here right away. Who exactly is this? Are you Secret Service? Forces? Police? What? I'm a civilian. I was, I was here when everything started going down. Hold the line. Going through to Camp David. What's all about? Mr. Servant. Use a stun grenade. Probably two minutes. Two minutes. Not half two minutes.
Naval office is secure. Hello, Paul. How is Alice? If you think you're going to get away with this, you're out of your mind. This isn't a parking lot hold, it's the White House. Yes, it is. And it's now in very, very unsafe hands. Mr. Vice President? Yeah, what is it? We have a caller who says he's in the West Wing. He says that he's a civilian, but he sounds like forces or something. He says the intruders have killed a lot of people in the West Wing. Okay, can you put him through? Hello? This is Vice President Gavin Lawson. Mr. Vice President. Who are you and where are you? I'm in the boiler room of the White House. I'm here with Sarah Merrick. The PA to the NSA. Now, we just got a guy out of the NSA's office. But everyone else we've come across is already dead, sir. And you didn't answer my first question. Who are you? I'm a civilian, sir. You know what? I don't have time for this crap. If you were a civilian, you wouldn't have just called yourself a civilian. I'm Christopher Lowe, sir. Lowe? The seal from the Alice Reynolds kidnapping? That's correct, sir. Okay, hold, hold the line, Lowe. Muted. He can't be trusted. He's the bastard in that endless loop on television showing him murdering a White House agent. Damn it. This is gonna keep Congress in hearings all year. Okay, unmute it. Lowe? Yes, sir? If you and Miss Merrick can get over to the NSA office, go ahead and leave the building. Otherwise, stay put. Do not engage with these people. Do not go hunting them down. We need a clear path to the president without having to worry about what you're up to. So you do have a plan to extract the president, sir? It doesn't concern you what our plan is, Lo. You are to stand down. Is that clear? You cannot be serious. You're gonna do this again? I'm in place and ready to bring them down from the inside. Gather intel. Hey. Their See this guy? It's beginning to become a nuisance. Deal with him. Be careful! This guy's good! And lo, because of the president's incapacitation, you just received a direct order from the acting commander-in-chief. Do you understand that? Yes, I understand. But I ceased to be a member of the Navy an hour ago, after your boss and his buddies decided to throw me to the lions. So I don't have to take orders from Pentagon paper shufflers. Look, Lo, we've all seen the footage of you executing the Secret Service officer. Don't make this any worse. Just get out of the building now. For God's sakes, yes, I executed a Secret Service. <laughs> Lo? It's gone, sir. He hung up. He admitted to murder and hung up. That confession is on tape. <laughs> 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 Paul, Paul, Paul. I had so much time to think about this meeting, and to be able to do it here is just, ugh, bucket list. Oh, come on, Paul, give me something. Converse with me a little, or do you think someone like you isn't good enough to converse with someone like me? You know, I had a couple of jumping off points for you. I was stuck, I was economics, you know, the healthcare, the foreign policies, the Middle East policy, oil, so many things for us to get started with. I was just building for the, the clash of the minds. Do you know what I mean, Paul? I was so excited, but I'm here, and I see you face to face. Well, you're much less impressive than you are on TV, and you are bloody awful on TV. I'm sure people have told you that. Today is another crazy example of what's wrong with this country. I just waltzed into the White House. That's mad. Paul, you have to do something about it. These Secret Service guys, I'm sorry to say it, they are below par. These are the people that protect your family. I think the US Armed Forces have 2.3 million people. The FBI has 40,000. The, the Secret Service, 7,000. And the Washington PD, 4,000. Do you think they're just out there scratching their butts, sir? He's good, isn't he? I'd want someone like him at my right hand side. Great, Andy, great response. Let's look into the detail, though. The Secret Service headcount, firstly, is probably taking a bit of a hit today. The police and the Secret Service together, I think I've demonstrated not just once, but twice, 
are ridiculously inept at protecting your present. And thirdly, don't try to baffle me with figures because you actually only have 1.3 in your active military. And that doesn't matter because half of them are abroad. And even if you did have a massive, huge army, does it matter? No, because they are not here! But we are. I believe the point that Mr. Whitmore is trying to make is that whatever it is you're after, you're not going to get away with it. Now stop telling me that I won't get whatever it is I want. What if I already have it? There's your bad guy, Mr. President. Christopher Lowe. Look what you did to him when you hung him out to dry. You pissed him off. He's gone able. You must feel like such a jackass. Paul, Peter, do join us. My, my. She is a lookable. I can see where Alice gets it from. I do hope Alice is nearby. Looks like she's still in Camp David. We couldn't find her anywhere. <sighs> really, Lisa? After what happened? Don't you talk about her. You don't even get to say her name. You just come back. Rita, that's just mean. You know, we, um, we had some time together, so we got really close. We actually really hit it off. I was kind of hoping it might be a um, mother-daughter thing. <laughs> Peter, that was rude. And whilst I can't tell you to respect your elders because you're like, what, 120 years old? I can tell you to respect the guy with the gun. <laughs> oh. I do hope you guys will start to take this seriously now. Let's breathe. The reassuring thing, Mr. Vice President, is that there's no overseas activity to indicate that this is part of a foreign plot. Well, that'll be very comforting to everyone in the White House. There is a foreign element, sir. I've been looking at the CCTV pictures from before the link to the White House was cut. I'm afraid that the leader of our group is our favorite Brit, Alexander Holt. Oh. We're contacting MI5 as we speak. He's being just as brazen as before. No attempt to disguise himself at all. Sir, we all saw what happened last time. We cannot wait around while this guy does his worst. Let's get Delta on site right now and rescue the president while we have a chance. And how are Delta Force going to achieve that? Well, th that'll be an operational call to be made by the commander on the ground, sir. You know, last time our special forces went up against Holt, we lost 80% of them. And now he might even have Christopher Lowe on his side. So tell me, how is this time going to be any different? Couldn't really go much worse, sir. Really? This time, it's the president. Which is precisely why we have to do something, sir. If only to prove that we're not going to bow down to terrorists and we'll not negotiate with these people. This is Barrett. Simon, it's Edward Manzer. Good to hear from you. Hello, this unexpected pleasure. You'd have your hands full right now, judging by what I'm watching on Channel 9. Well, that's just it. There is something you can help me with here. The group that's taking the building is led by Alexander Holt. Oh. Who wants to guess what my, uh, my favorite ever film scene is? Clue, bearing in mind where we are. Superman 2. You'll get there in a minute now. Zod, Lursa, and Nom, they crash through the skyline, and the army are waiting for them. This is in the West Wing, and they're firing rockets at them. They're literally invading the White House. And they waltz into the Oval Office, looking for the president. Now, they don't know who the president is because they've been in the Phantom Zone, so they're not up with current affairs. <laughs> sort of. Um, so they, a fake president comes out, he kneels, and they realize, they're like, no, you're not the real president. Actually, this is important. Paul. Are you the president at the moment? Or have you done that 
gutless thing that, that presidents do at the first sign of trouble, which is hand over your powers to some random guy who nobody voted for. I'm the president. Is he Andy? I'm the president. You should, just in general, in the White House, have a copy of Superman 2. Does anybody have a copy of Superman 2? We don't have to watch it. We can play this out. This is a bit of a bucket list thing for me. Um, Paul, uh, come on, you know what scene I'm doing. You actually know, don't you? Well, uh, sorry, you're right. Let me give me the, let me give you the cue. <clears throat> Kneel before Zod. I'm not getting on my knees. But it will save many lives, starting with your own. I am not getting on my knees to fulfill some childish fantasy of yours. You're right. You're right. I need to make this real for you, don't I? Leave her alone! That's it. How about this? Oh. Sit down! Let me put it to you a different way. Kneel, otherwise I'm gonna put a bullet in your wife's face. Stop it! I am actively trying to stop him. I'm trying to get along with you. I'm involving you in the decision-making process. Isn't that what presidents do? They decide things. You decide who lives and who dies. Andy brings you a piece of paper that says, shall we kill a thousand of these people or a thousand of those people? And you go, I don't know, these people. And you pick one, randomly. So now you're gonna pick here. This is ridiculous. This is an easy decision for you. There's no collateral damage here, unless you want there to be collateral damage. What are you doing, Rita, huh? This is an easy decision, right? It would infuriate me if I was you, the mother of his child, his wife, his lover, the woman who has kept him in office all this time, the woman that helped him get here. Halt! Halt. Are you happy now? I'm elated, Paul. Because you just taught me that you love her. And that's going to be very, very useful. Take a pew, Paul. Do we know what this guy wants this time? We haven't yet received any demands from the White House. What do we know about this Holt guy anyway? He's British, ex-military, ex-intelligence service. MI5 briefed us on him after St. Patrick's Day in order to disavow him of any connection to them. Well, how did they get away with redacting it? They cited national security as the reason. Well, that sounds like a pile of bull. Well, to be fair, Mr. Vice President, that's the same reason we give when we redact our files. Yeah, but they're our ally. All right, well, what did they tell us? Born into a military family, did four years in the British Army, but they don't specify what. He then went on to work for MI5 for an unspecified role for another three years. So his role in the Army probably involved intel. No wonder he's been able to dance around our defenses. Even the best trained operatives in the world couldn't breach the White House as easily as he did without help. Mr. Vice President, I do strongly suspect that he had help from someone on the inside be it through an alliance or through coercion. Sir, one of my agents got a lead in London from MI5. They've been very keen to cooperate. Well, how delightful. Remind me to send them flowers. Uh, please, give me it, something. Sir, we have found what we believe to be Holt's only surviving relative, his mother. You found his mother? This could be the ace up our sleeve. This will give us a personal angle to work on Holt, the same kind of personal angle he had when he took Alice Reynolds. I hear what you're saying.
Is anyone expecting a call on the bat phone? Obviously, they want to talk. Yes, obviously, Paul. You're through to the Oval Office. How may I direct your call? Hello, Alex. This is Gavin Lawson. Gavin? It's the VP. The gang's all here. How the devil are you? Don't ever call me Alex, by the way. We're not friends. You can call me Holt. Fine, Holt it is. Hey, Gavin, what's it like in the hot seat, right? For which you are very welcome, by the way. I've had better days, Holt. I'd very much like to speak to the president. Is that possible? Paul, say hello. It's me, Gavin. How are you, Paul? I'm unharmed. Listen, Rita and Andy are here with me. They've got us surrounded. <laughs> Enough chitter-chatter. Come on. When I wanted you to talk earlier, you wouldn't say anything. Gavin knows everything he needs to know, that you're alive, and I'm serious, don't you, Gavin? Holt, I'd like to bring this situation to a peaceful conclusion as quickly as possible. Gavin, that is so noble of you. I'm going to help you get to that goal. So, here's what we need to do. We need to hang up. But in the meantime, and as an act of good faith, I'd really like to see no helicopters, no planes, no jets, no tanks, no SWAT cars, no SWAT vans, no police cars, or Marines or Navy SEALs, or Delta Force, or any of these other people, down to Boy Scouts, within a 10-mile radius of the Oval Office. I understand. We already have a no-fly zone in effect around the Capitol. But before things progress, I would like to offer you something. What? No, 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 no. Gavin, Gavin, Gavin. No, no. You have to wait for the first demand. Like his birthday. I suppose that would be the normal course of action. But I've got something I really think you're going to want to take, and... Time is a factor here. I, wow. This negotiation tactic, uh, I've never heard of it before. Okay, what is it, Gavin, that you can give me that I don't already have, bearing in mind that I have everything I want in this room? Put her through. Yes, sir. Alex? Alex? What is going on? <clears throat> Mother? Where are you? <clears throat> are they... are they holding you somewhere? They're not holding me anywhere, Alex. Don't be ridiculous. I'm is back it, home in London. Is this it, Gavin? And this is the... this is the big plan? You put my mother through on the phone to talk me off the ledge, is that it? Do you not think I'm resolved to this, Gavin? That's when you thought you'd still have time to see her after all this. Whether you escaped or you were captured, and she could visit you in prison. What does that mean? Huh? What are you, are you gonna kill my mom? That doesn't sound very free world of you, Gavin. I'm sorry, I don't buy it. I wouldn't have to do that. What the hell does that mean? Alex, calm down and listen to me. I have stage four cancer. I'm dying. They are telling no. you the truth. No, 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 I... I should have told you when I last saw you. No, you're fine. I, I, mom, I saw you a couple of weeks ago. You were fine. I... I'm not fine. And I wasn't fine. I'm very ill. No, sh stop it, Mom! You're lying! They are making you say this, and you're lying! Mr. President, First Lady Reynolds. We're fine. Clear. We're fine, Gavin. Shut up! Shut up, Gavin. This is this is a sneaky low trick, even for a politician. Mother, I don't know what they're doing to you to make you say this, but you need to stop. Okay? You just ignore them. They're not making me say anything, Alex. Will you stop shouting? I'm in hospital. I'm sorry. I should have told okay. you. Okay, right. <clears throat> Okay, who is it? Is there somebody there with you? Who is it? This is Simon Barrett. Agent Barrett. Agent Barrett, you put the phone next to a heart monitor. If she's in a hospital, she'll have a heart monitor. You put the phone next to it so we can all hear. Do it! Sorry. Why didn't he tell me? She, she, she told me. Cut the line. Lawson, you put it back on! No, Holt, you don't call the shots here. You're going to calmly take a few minutes and consider my offer.
Mrs. Holt, I understand how difficult this must be for you right now. And I want to thank you for your continued cooperation. I really think we're getting through to your son here. I just need him to take a few minutes to consider my offer. I understand, Mr. Lawson. I'll do everything I can. I'm going to put you on hold for a few more minutes, but I'm going to leave you in the very capable hands of Agent Barrett. Thank you, Mr. Lawson. You're a troubleshooter, aren't you, Andy? You're a... You solve problems all day long for the president. That's what you do. I do my best. So you are the best. You're the chief of staff to the president of the United States. And I have a big problem. Gavin Lawson is jerking me around. I don't think he's taking me seriously. Now, to demonstrate my resolve normally, I would shoot someone in the face. Just like that. But I can't shoot him, right? Because he's the prize, and I can't shoot her. I hollow him out a little. So what I need is like a third expendable option. What do you think, Andy? Hmm? I don't think the vice president is jerking around. I think he takes you very seriously. Does he really? Oh, and what the hell would you want? You are about to make a serious misstep here, Holt. Listen to me. Listen to me. Gavin Lawson and I barely see eye to eye on a good day. Andrew Whitmore is the godfather of his children. They've known each other for years. You shoot him, the negotiations are over. So if you want to shoot somebody, you shoot me. No, Mr. President. No. Hold. I'm serious. I am serious. I guarantee you the negotiations will be finished. I good and goddamn guarantee it. If you shoot him, Lawson storms this room as soon as the reinforcements arrive and he kills everyone. So if you shoot him, you might as well shoot all of us and get it over with. Yeah. No, Mr. President. You want me to shoot a president? No, sir. You want shoot me to me. shoot the first lady? No. And, and, and. Get the gun off him. I am not joking around here. Whatever it is you want, you are not going to get it if you pull that trigger. And you will never, ever talk to your mother again. Bold move by Gavin. Got to give him credit for that. I backfired spectacularly. You son of a bitch. Sir, right now we have a tactical advantage that we know exactly which room of the White House they are in, the Oval Office. That means we know where to focus a rescue. If they move from that room, then we lose the ability for a precision raid. All right, boys, get yourselves to the helicopter. Sir, Christopher Lowe's on the line. Holden his crew have left their post. I think they're preparing to leave the White House, sir. But I do want every marksman in position, and I want every member of the armed forces ready to enter the White House if the opportunity presents itself. And if any of those marksmen get a clear shot at the terrorists, tell them to take it. I will use everything at my disposal as president of the United States to hunt you down and make you suffer, and I will enjoy every second. See, Paul, we're not so different, you and I. Now you're qualified to hate me. <laughs> 